Want to add a programmable 48Q pyro sequencer and audio to another system? You can do that with the FTH48FX module. With the DMX option, you can add up to 1200 lines of DMX to any external system. Okay, what I have here on the table is a number of devices from the firing systems I've used over the last decade. You know, I started off first getting into the firing systems with the RF Remotech devices. You know, those are pretty reliable devices. Um, I've never had any problem with them. They certainly don't have the range of the more professional systems. Um, they don't allow scripting or music, uh, but they work for manual firing. I also have a number of 18M Cobra modules and the 18R2 remote, which allows scripting. I haven't purchased the separate audio box um, that's needed to add audio to the Cobra system. But what I have used the last three or four years is the FireTech system. What I wanted to do today is show that you can use a FTH48FX module as a programmable pyro sequencer for all 48 cues that it can control. Additionally, this module has a DMX output, and with the DMX option, I can control up to 1200 lines of DMX. And any of the FireTech modules with an included Android application can take any Android device, and I've got an old cell phone here, and control audio. And I'm going to show how to set that up here. With any of my other systems, I can trigger the FireTech system as a pyro sequencer, a DMX controller, and an audio controller. So this FireTech module here um, it has a program already loaded into it, so I've created a script and loaded it into it. PRGD indicates that there's a program loaded. This indication here shows with the Vs, it shows that there's something programmed um, on those cues of the rails 1, 2, and 3. Rail 4 doesn't have anything programmed on it. These are the rails associated with that module, rail 1, 2, and 3, and 4. It's currently at the initiation state of the module. You get to initiation state rather than safe mode by holding down the green forward button while you power it on. So while we're at initiation state, we're going to pulse the external trigger of this module to let it know that there is an external trigger and it can activate the external trigger function of the module. We do that here with this adapter here and we plug it into the ET slash EP port. This is external trigger or external power. We're going to use this for external trigger. Uh, the module also allows hot swappable external power or charging without having to turn the module off. We've got the other end of this cable for the external trigger plugged into the 18M module on Q18. Other than the firing modules, we've got uh, a number of PAR lights set up here and two inexpensive flame machines, all controlled by DMX from this module here. We also have an old cell phone here running the FT Control Android application with a USB cord. This cord is currently not plugged into the module. We don't want to plug this cord in until after we have set the external trigger on this module. With uh, the external trigger plugged in, we're going to take the 18R2 here. We could do this with any other system, but we're going to put this into ARM. This module here is at channel 1, so we're going to make sure we're at channel 1. And while this is at initiation state, it's not in armed, 
we're going to give it a pulse on Q18, which is what the external trigger is plugged into. So we've done that while well, it's in the initiation state. And for the second battery icon, it's changed to ET. So it's now activated the external trigger function. So we can go ahead and disarm the 18R2. We can even turn it off for now. As long as we keep this powered, the external trigger function will remain active. So after we've done this here, we can plug in the FT control app with the USB cable. Now the FT control application functions in two modes. It functions in what I call master control mode or audio box mode. In master control mode, the FT control application can actually control the script, not just the music. In audio box mode, it only controls or plays the audio. Since we're connecting it into a standalone module, it will go into the master control mode. And so as we plug this in, It'll ask us to recognize that or allow that connection, so we'll hit OK. And we can see here it's gone into test. And it says we can go to add slaves or to arm. This is allowing us to control the module. It also has the audio file already preloaded. I did that earlier, MP3 file. And this module here has gone into test. When we're ready to start the show, we'll arm the FireTech system, and we can do that through the FT control application, since this is in master control mode, and our module is in a master module. We can also do that directly on the module by holding down the green advanced button. For now, we'll go ahead and do a long hold on the green arm button on the FT control app. You see the application has gone into armed, the module has also gone into armed. With the FireTech system now armed, we can arm the external module, and we could have armed the 18R2 and 18M first, or if we were using the uh, RF Remotech or whatever other external system, we could have armed those first and then armed the FireTech system. It wouldn't really matter. All right, we'll go ahead and arm an 18R2 here. We'll make sure this is in channel one. Our module here is set to channel one. I'll point out here that this is in uh, EMATCH mode. This would also work in Talon mode, except for there would be a longer delay as the Talon mode circuit stays closed for a longer duration. Um, now that we have everything armed, we can trigger both systems with this lead controller here. Um, we could load a script into this, and the script could control the FireTech system by pulsing Q18. In this case here, we're just going to manually fire it. So as I press 18 here, you can see the module goes into play and starts counting. The Android application has gone into play. Our audio system is playing. DMX lights are playing. The rails are firing. I don't know if you can see that here in the light. We could pause this. So we paused it. It's paused on the module. It's paused on the Android device. Now when we're in the FT control, master control mode, when we unpause it, the audio will pick up from where it left off. 
as long as it hasn't completed that audio file. So if we hit 18 again here, the module goes back into play, the Android device goes back into play, the audio picked up where it left off, the script picked up where it left off. See if you can see the rails firing here. We have the DMX devices firing. And there you go. Hope you found that interesting. You can use a FireTech system to add 48 cues of pyro, DMX control, and audio to just about any other system out there. Oh, but wait, there's more. I forgot. I had another module here on the table, module two. So this module also has a script loaded into it. It's ID2. Um, the FireTech field modules, not only can they work as a standalone module, but when they're in master mode, they can create a network with the other modules, and you can control other modules out in the field with a master module. In this case, we're going to do that with the external trigger. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the back button on this, the blue back button, this is going to go back to the create network state. I have already unplugged the Android device from the master module. I have restarted the FT control application and reloaded the audio file onto it. Now that this is in the create network state, it tells us to power on slaves. We're going to start this module, which we intend to be a slave here. Now you can see it has a program loaded into it, PRG. It's ID2, and it has just gone to S there at the end, indicating that it is identified as the slave. If we go back to the master module, it tells us that there is one slave connected. It can take a couple minutes before it goes from power on slaves when it's at a standalone master module to test mode. So while it's doing that, let's connect the FT control Android application now to the slave module. So we'll connect this now to the USB device. We'll accept the connection on the Android device. And you can see here now on the Android application, it has gone to test mode for the audio and it says audio box test and we can hit play here to test just the audio. It no longer controls the modules because it's connected to a slave module. So if we hit play here, we can do a sound check on the audio. Now this is intended, we'll go ahead and stop here. This is intended so you could take a field module and an Android device and set it in the sound booth and that can control the audio. It would network with everything out on the field. In this case, I've got a script loaded into it, and it's got a script across all four rails, and we've got those connected up here. The other thing I'll point out here is on this current version of the FT Control app that I have, when it's in the audio box and you pause the script, um, the audio will restart when you unpause it. It'll restart from the beginning, something to be aware of. When it's in the master control mode, it will pick up where it left off. However, when it's in the audio box mode, just be aware that when you pause it, the audio will restart. And I'm sure that will get fixed in a future firmware update here. Okay, I've dimmed the lights here so we can see the uh, LEDs on the rails a little bit better. Um, our master module here has gone to test mode, so it's no longer in the create network mode. We have our module two here. It's also in test mode. Now what we're going to do is we're going to arm the system. So in this case here, we'll go ahead and arm the 18R2 here. Now we'd already used uh, Q18, so it's, it's flashing, but we can hit it again. Now we're going to arm the FireTech system. Now we're unable to arm it with the FT Control app because it's in audio box mode and connected to the slave module. So we're going to use the master module 
to arm it in this case, and we do that by a long hold on the green forward button. And so the master module has gone into arm. The slave module has gone into arm. The audio box, test mode, it now says arm, and the option to check the audio is no longer available. So with the FireTech system now armed, we can trigger it with the 18R2 and the 18M. We can see the master module's gone into play. The slave module's gone into play. The audio box has gone into play. The audio is playing. DMX is running. see the LEDs fire on the rails. There you go. Not only can the FireTech field modules work as a sequencer, they can also create a network of other FireTech modules.